This video gives a quick example of how you might create a MATLAB GUI. What are the key steps then? Well, the first thing you do is you go into MATLAB and you type guide. We will show this in a minute. Then once the relevant windows appear, you add the required icons and set your colors and sizes and positions. In essence, you create a picture of what you want your GUI to look like. Then you type save. And when you do this, MATLAB will create the associated M file for you. You now go into the M file and you put the relevant code into the callback subfunctions relevant to all your active icons, which are likely to be things like the slider, the edit text boxes, the push buttons, and so on. And finally, when you've finished, in order to run the GUI, you can type the name in the command window. There are shortcuts if guide is open, but in the long term it's best to get in the habit of typing the name in the command window. So finally, what context are we going to use? We're going to look at an example of second order dynamics. Keep it simple. There's a standard second order equation. And we're going to look at how does the step response behavior change as you change the damping ratio. Let's go to MATLAB then and see what's how this is going to work. So here's MATLAB. And you remember the first thing I did is I said I type guide. So that's all I've done. I've typed guide. Now you have to be patient here. So I want to create a new GUI. So and I want a blank one because I don't want to anticipate what I might need. And there you go. You'll see it's come up with a simple screen like this. And you'll notice all your icons are here on the left hand side. So I'm going to want a push button basically, which is going to say something like run simulation. So once I put that push button on, I can double click on it and you see all the properties come up down here. So the first thing I want is to look at the string. So I don't want the string to say push button. I want to say something like run simulation. Now hopefully you're happy that it's pretty transparent how to change that. So that's done. I might not like the font size and I might not like the color. And again, you'll see it's fairly obvious what's going on. So font size is currently eight. I could make that something like 18. That looks fine. I might not like the background color. So I've got up here and what background color would you like? Let's say green. I'm just making this up. Basic idea is you see how easy it is to personalize this icon once you have created it. You just double click and all the properties come up. So we'll close that. So that's my push button, which I'm going to use to make the simulation run. Now, I want to enter some values, so I will use a slider. So here's my slider. And I can make the slider as big or as small as I like. You saw that there. So the next thing is say, OK, what are the properties of this slider? So you'll see I've clicked on it. And the key ones here are the values it can take. So you'll notice if we go down, um, I've always got to find this slider steps I wouldn't change. Those are percentages. So what that means is that if you press the end point or the middle point, what percentage of the overall movement does it move? And you'll see it's currently got a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of one. Now, I might actually want that maximum value to go up to something like two, an overdamp system. The minimum value may be down to 0 0.01. I don't want to go to pure oscillation, but you can if you want. And you'll see at the bottom, it's just, uh, this isn't quite big enough, this screen. You see at the bottom, we've got value, which is the value it will be initialized at. Okay, and I don't want it initialized at naught. Let's initialize it at something like 0 0.5. You can obviously set what you want. So it's going to be initialized at 0 0.5, which means when the GUI is first run, that will have a value of 0.5. Right, so we'll close that one. Now, the next thing I want is an edit text box. Now, what an edit text box does <coughs> is it allows you to change on the hoof the values. I tend to use edit text boxes to match the slider so you can see what value is currently in the slider. So if we open this edit text box, again, you'll see the font's a bit small. So let's make it slightly bigger so we can see and this has a string and what I'm going to do is put in for this string the same value 
that I initialized the slider at, which is 0 0.5. So you can see this 0 0.5 is telling me what's in the slider. But you'll see later, I'm going to edit this on the go. OK? I'm not bothering with the colors at this point in time. You can obviously change colors if you want. So now let's put in my figure and again you can on my plot window and you can see I can make this as big or as small as I want and you can move these icons around achieve the shape that you desire. Now I'm also going to put in just a simple text box here to give a title to my GUI. So if I double click on that again we'll change the font doesn't really matter what size and I'll go down to the string and I'll put something like second order dynamics. I'm doing this quickly. I'm deliberately not trying to dwell um, on details and make it perfect, just so that you can see the point. We'll change the background color, make it pink. It doesn't really matter. There we go. So I've got that wrong, the wrong size there, haven't I? So there we are. Second order dynamics. You can make the title look a bit nicer if you want. So you can do things like let's put the run button there and let's put the title up there. OK, so I've now got pretty much everything I want on my GUI. So I'm going to give it a name. So I'll go File, Save As. I'm going to call this Demo GUI because that's what it is. So I type Demo GUI. And that has now saved. And you'll notice MATLAB has now created this M file for me. It's just opened it up. And I've now got an M file called Demo GUI. Now, what I do next is look for the callback functions linked to my key icons. Now, the key icons were this slider, this edit text box, and run simulation. So, first of all, I'm going to do the edit text box. So if somebody enters a number in this edit text box, what I want to do is update the slider so the two are paired. So it tells you here, it gives you a hint, this is how I get the value out of the edit text box. So there we are, I've just copied it. So I can do str equals get, and that tells me what somebody has just put in the edit text box. And it's a string. I want to put that in the slider, and the way you put things in slider is you use set. So I'm going to go set. Now the slider, if we go and have a look, and find out what the tag was, you'll see down here where it says tag, the tag is slider.1. So I can access the slider by writing handles. Everything is using handles. It, you can see that here. Handles contains all the handles for the icons. So I go handles dot followed by the tag, which is slider one. What I want to change in the slider is its value, in other words, its position. And what I want to put in there is what I've just got out of the edit text box. So I've got to change that string into a number, which is what num to string does. So if I haven't made a silly mistake, what that code will do is every time I change the edit text box, it will move the slider. OK, so for now we'll go up and find a callback. See, here's slider 1 callback. And I want a similar thing to happen here. If I update the slider, I want the edit, to edit text box to change. So here's how I get the value out of the slider. It tells you. So we go here, and we go val equals. And then I want to put that into the edit text box. So I go set handles.edit1, which will be the handle for the edit text box, comma string, because that has a string in it. And therefore, I now want to go num2 string of value. And that tells me that I made a silly mistake in the previous one, which happens when you do these things on the hoof. That should not have been num2 string. That should have been string to num. These things happen. Or indeed, it's advising up here that you go string to double. So we'll try that. There we go. These silly mistakes do happen when you do things off the top of your head. Right. So now, just to make sure we don't lose those things, I'll save that. So what we should be having now is I can test my GUI just to make sure these things work. So I'll go here. 
and this little green button allows me to run a test with the code I've currently set. So let's press that and here's my, my GUI and if I've done this right when I move the slider the text box should update and when I change the text box the slider should update. So we'll try it and you can see as I move the slider the text box updates and I can change the text box let's try 0.2 and the slider updates so now I'm happy that those two are unified so all I need to do now is get this run simulation button working so let's go and find the callback for the push button here it is so the first thing I've got to do is collect this value of zeta which is what's in the slider so I go zeta equals get handles dot slider one comma dash value so that gets the value out of the slider create my model so g equals tf one comma one comma two times zeta comma one so there's a transfer function representation of my model with this value of zeta create a time vector so we could have time equals lin space naught comma twenty comma two hundred and then simulate so we can go x comma I don't need the time because I've already got the x equals step g comma time and that will give me the values of x and then I could simply go plot oh no I've got to set the axis first got to be careful here so axis and the axis we want to use is handles dot axis one so if you check if I go to this axis you can see it's told you the tag here axis dot one so if I want to plot into this one I need to make sure that's active and that's what this statement here will do it will make that the active axis and now I can plot into that going plot Tim comma X Alright, so a very simple piece of code. When I press the push button, generate the step response and put it into the plot. So I can save that and now we can test. Does it work? So I press run. There's my GUI again. Change the values and now run. And you can see it's worked. Change the values and run. Change the values and run. Change the values press the run button and it runs. So now you've got an example of a very simple GUI which could be written in just a few minutes. Now just as a by the by what would you do if you wanted to overlay different responses for different values of zeta because here it's deleting them every time. Well what you can do is you can simply put here a hold on and now in theory, I'm going to close this and start again. Whenever I run it, it will just keep adding plots. So I run that, there's the first plot. Change zeta, run, there's the second plot. Change zeta, run, there's the third plot. Now obviously, the student needs to uh, keep a record of which of these plots corresponds to which of their values of zeta because they're all the same color. But what we're not trying to do in this video is write a really elaborate GUI which is all singing and dancing. We're trying to demonstrate that you can do simple things quite quickly. But we'll do one more task. What's happening here is of course this window is now getting quite cluttered. I've got lots and lots of plots and I'm saying oh I want to start again. Of course you could because this is such a simple GUI just close it and start again and that may be the easiest thing to do. But there are alternatives. You can, if you want, put on another push button. Here it is. And what I'm going to do is just change the text on this push button. I'm not going to bother with colors and stuff. You can do that in your own time. And you'll see I'm just going to put in that clear axis. In other words, I want to start again. So if somebody presses that, I want to start again. So what I'm going to do is now press save and here's the key thing when I press this save button it's added 
that's an extra code to my M file. You see it's added this push button to callback. So what do I want to happen when that callback is activated? I want to clear the axis. So I simply go CLA um, and I've got to get the handle right so it's handles dot axes one. So what that should do is clear the axis. So we'll save that and if I've done it right we'll know if it works. So let's run again. Let's just do a few examples. Run with a few different zetas. And now if I press clear axis it should clear it. There we go. It's clear. And now I can run again. It's in different values. So hopefully that's given users enough of a demonstration of how easy it is to create some quite nice GUIs very, very quickly.